Is Stellantis in trouble and will they ever recover in the American market? Well, the spotlight is on Stellantis and it seems like things are getting worse for them. Their third quarter sales in the U.S. were a disaster, falling 20% for the year. They're down 17% and investors are heading for the exits. And that's a big concern. The stock price dropped 12% this week and is down 40% so far this year. And at the beginning of the year, the company's market cap was $70 billion dollars. And now it's $36 billion, a $34 billion drop in value in only 10 months. Stellantis said they will not report their global Q3 sales until the end of the month. But Bloomberg reports that its production in Italy has cratered, dropping 41% so far this year. It only made about 238,000 vehicles there. That's not very good, which is less than it made in 2020 when COVID pandemic shut down its plants. Last year, Stellantis was one of the most profitable full-line manufacturers with double-digit margins, and Carlos Tavares was hailed as one of the best CEOs in the business. But this year, he's managed to turn everyone against him. His dealers, the unions, his employees, and even the Italian government. The board is also actively looking for a new CEO when his contract expires in 2026, and it's possible he won't last that long. Now, the board of directors may have to buy out his contract if only to prove they're upholding their fiduciary duty. Jeep and Ram are their most valuable brands. So the fact that Stellantis stated that they're going to double down on electric vehicles that are really not selling from any brand other than maybe Tesla, they're getting rid of all their high performance cars instead, which they all are known for and is a foolish move. And I even own a demon and I can't believe it. But before I dig deeper, please like this video and subscribe to stay up to date on breaking automotive news. Now there are no cars left, just SUVs and trucks. And removing the current Charger and Challenger, I think was a mistake. Dodge could have sold that Challenger on that same platform for another 10 years with competitive volume against the Mustang and there isn't even a Camaro anymore. These cars are money makers and the profit per car when you have the same platform for 20 years is unbeatable. Sadly, the Stellantis CEO is pressured by government regulations and not understanding the U.S. marketplace because it's completely different than that of Europe. And the results are the end of the Challenger and the Charger, and sadly, the brand will soon follow. They need a Lee Iacocca is what they really need. Under the same brand is Fiat and Alfa Romeo, and personally, I really like those cars. And they have an all-new, all-electric 2024 Fiat 500 and an Alfa Romeo Tonale, and we reviewed both of them on our channel. But at the same time, they're removing all their performance cars in the U.S. marketplace, and that's what consumers are buying. That's what they really want, and you can see that from other brands that sell performance models. To help cope with the downturn, Stellantis is apparently planning to do some drastic cuts in labor costs and is expecting a 25% reduction in logistical expenses for the second part of the year. Maserati, which I really do like, and we've reviewed those on our channel as well, may also not be too long for this world, and that's actually sad because that brand is all about racing and performance. Again, this could be a huge mistake. The UAW put pressure on Stellantis during the last strike, and after they settled the contract, Stellantis decided to move some of their production to Mexico to save some money. Well, this week, Stellantis is filing nine lawsuits against the union seeking to block any attempt to strike over the commitments they made in that 2023 contract. As for Mr. Tavares, well, he keeps flip-flopping. He's often said the truth about EVs and warned the EU, the European politicians, about the idiocy of their EU7 regulations and electric vehicles. And every new car that launches as an electric vehicle will become available as a hybrid or an ice or gas version. He's pretty good at walking the fence as far as not being green, but still being able to make them happy. Stellantis is positioned to make faster business decisions than Volkswagen, Renault, Mercedes-Benz, or other CEOs. It's a shame they killed the Hemi, the Hellcat, and the Demon Motors, but the Hurricane engine, well, it isn't awful, and Tavares' downsizing decisions are less radical than those of major car manufacturers in other areas of the world. However, in the past few months, he has flip-flopped and changed his tune. Mr. Tavares started making statements about doubling down on going green. Somebody might be paying him off or he's afraid for his job. All while other car companies are moving to hybrid and electric vehicles and letting consumers make the choice, people are talking behind the scenes and it's clearly going badly after July in the summer sales numbers. This week, employees were offered early buyouts, which means more quality, long-term talent will leave the company. And sadly, I know a few of them personally, 
and I think this is a huge mistake. Since CEO Tavares has taken the lead of Stellantis, the departure of leaders is a huge concern. Key U.S. personnel like Jim Morrison and Tim Kaniskas and a few other top talent that have decades of experience running a U.S. car company, well, they're gone. And these actions scream a lack of awareness or just a lack of concern and probably some arrogance too. There's also no metrics that look good for the U.S. brands right now and a wide spectrum that look really bad. And that screams incompetence. Maybe it's the difference between a European market and not understanding the U.S. marketplace. This scenario happened in the past with Daimler Chrysler, and they had their own fiasco when the Germans decided that they knew everything and the U.S. brands could be neglected. And we all saw the results, and the same thing happened with FCA. Now Stellantis is hoping that new model launches will help the automaker in the second half of 2024. Right now, there's a total of 20 new vehicles planned across the Stellantis vast stable of brands. The leaders that turned around Stellantis have now left the company, and we will all have to wait for future product to see what direction they finally choose. We will keep our eyes on the market and keep you posted. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this, and check out our car review channel, Car Smarts. You can support me by buying me a cup of coffee, and if you want even more content, check out the links in the description. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching.